I don't think I've ever eaten this much sashimi in my life. Yes, that's right. I've just come back from the Fukushima prefecture in Japan. And in this video, I'm going to be telling you my favorite 10 things to do in Fukushima. Now do bear in mind that I traveled here during winter. So a lot of my recommendations are going to be winter focused, but of course it's not an exhaustive list. Here are just 10 things that I suggest that you do. Please do some research. There are plenty more things to do in this amazing region of Japan. We traveled from Tokyo to Fukushima on the Shinkansen, the bullet train which took just under one and a half hours to go from Tokyo to Koryama and I do recommend you looking to getting yourself a JR pass a Japan rail pass you don't need to book it before you go but it does make things a lot easier you can get a week or two weeks and it always makes amazing value so yeah don't forget this is not a complete list and do excuse some of my pronunciations feel free to drop them in the comments if you think I've pronounced anything wrong at all and also if you're new here please consider subscribing hit the notification button so you don't miss a video drop any additional comments anything you'd like to know in the comments below and give it a thumbs up if you're enjoying it Recommendation number one and two combined is the Yanazu town and the Enzoji temple. You'll find both of these in the same town, but let's start off with the temple. This incredibly historic temple was built 1200 years ago in 807. Let that sink in, 807. It's an incredible wooden structure and you can't film inside, but don't forget to touch the bull on the outside. There'll be a little bit more about that bull called the Akibeko in a second. Once you've explored the temple and its incredible views over the town, have a wander around the town itself because it is absolutely beautiful. This is a typical mountainous town in Fukushima and it is stunning. And then if you want something fun to do, head to the tourist information office, which also has these incredible views across the river, and you can do some Akibeku painting. Now, the red ball is synonymous in the area because legend has it that they actually helped with the construction of the temple itself. And you you will see them everywhere from on the post boxes uh, to the windows they are basically the little symbol of the town and for something else fun to do you can try your hand at our manju which is a local sweet from the area and you can have a go at making it and baking it and eating it yourself my recommendation number three is to take the scenic train route called the Tadami Line. Now this is a five and a half hour train journey if you don't get off crossing Fukushima and some of the some of the most stunning scenery that you will ever see. Now we were a little bit unlucky because we had a massive snowstorm on the little part that we were going to do. However, we could still see just how beautiful it was. Look at this. <laughs> Sadly, the train line itself was damaged in a typhoon in 2011, the same year as the tsunami, and it's been closed for 10 years, but last year they rebuilt it and reopened it, so this famous train is now running again. The best bit is the whole journey only costs 2,600 yen, but it's also included in your JR pass. It runs about three times a day, and you can hop on and hop off, and I do recommend that you stop at Itagashi Village, which is at the Hayato station, only a short walk and that has this incredible little lodges with an amazing view again we didn't quite get to see it but check out their website I'll try and pop a link in the description below so you can book it I really recommend a stop off there Okay, my fourth recommendation, and still in the same kind of area of Fukushima, I've tried to keep these grouped together, is an incredible onsen hotel resort called the Azu Ashinomaki Hot Spring Resort Hotel Ukawasu. <laughs> what a mouthful. The reason I love this hotel and put this as one thing to do is you really feel the Japanese tradition as soon as you walk in the door. From the moment that you see a traditional lady playing a shamisen, a stringed instrument showcase in front of everybody, Body, to the moment you step into your bedroom you can book two types of rooms a traditional Japanese style or a more modern style of course we had the 
traditional style. Now they have two onsens here, one is inside and one is outside with the stunning scenery right in front of you. Unfortunately you can't film inside so do have a look at the photos on their website and again I will pop a link to how to book it in the description below. And then the fun part was dressing up in a yukata, the traditional Japanese dress and going down for dinner and eating the kasiki dishes. I'm not sure if I pronounced that right but it's a traditional Japanese style with sashimi and all kinds of fresh food particularly love the sashimi because I've never usually liked it but that was delicious and then check out some of the drone shots I got of the scenery the next morning so you can really see the hotel in its full glory. My recommendation number five is Lake Inuashiro, which is not far from the Koryama station. Now there is plenty to do at this lake, but again, we didn't have the most spectacular weather. It is part of the Bandai Ashi National Park, and there is a lot of skiing and snowboarding in the area. On a nice day, I'm sure you can take a boat or a pedalo. All we got to do really was see the scenery, which still looked amazing, and feed the swans. Things to do number six and seven. I'm combining them together and we are now moving to the east coast of Fukushima. Number six is to go cycling along the east coast. The road has been reconstructed since March 2021 and it's called the Iwaki Nanahama Kaido route, which is 53 kilometers and includes all of the different beaches in the region. We cycled from power plant number two and we ended up at a stunning beach with the Bensajima Island Shrine and we had a good wonder out to that, got some photos of the shrine, but honestly what a spectacular spot to end the cycle. And finally a couple of extra tips, I recommend stopping at Wonder Farm where they grow their own tomatoes for lunch, all fresh produce and when you hire your bike from the cycle shop, please try and meet the little gorgeous dog which is the mascot of the cycle shop, absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> Number eight is to check out an east coast sunrise. They don't call it the land of the rising sun for nothing. This morning on the east coast of Fukushima, we have braved the weather and got up for this incredible sunrise. Honestly, you could get the sunrise at any one of the beaches, but we did it from our hotel called Iwaki Shinmeiko Heights, and it was just a short walk to the beach. But I'll just give you a moment to check out this beautiful sunrise, because honestly, it's something you have to do in Fukushima. Now recommendation number nine is really focusing on appreciating the disaster, the tsunami and the nuclear disaster in the area and visiting two places that I recommend. The first is Namea School, which has now been reopened as a museum and somewhere for people to learn from the mistakes and learn on how to uh, react to disasters in the future. The school, in my opinion, is also somewhat of a success story because the 83 students were evacuated to Mount Ohira um, because they had a 40 minute warning of the tsunami and the teachers and then a local truck driver took them to the top of the mountain where they escaped the tsunami. It is quite a thought provoking place because they've left the bottom of the school as it was after it was completely destroyed. Um, and there's a lot of photos of the town and the disaster and how it looked when things had happened. And obviously memorials to the people that had passed away. So it's a really important place to visit. One of the most fascinating is seeing just how high the wave went, uh, which is quite frightening to be, to be honest. Just along from the school, I recommend visiting the museum called the Great East Japan Earthquake and New clear disaster memorial museum so it's quite quite a mouthful but again they have a lot of information about the nuclear disaster how it happened a lot of photos and a lot of things that you need to appreciate and take the time to see when you visit this area of fukushima And finally, you cannot come to Japan without talking about the food. So my recommendation number 10 is to try all of the food from the sashimi to the kaseki style that we had, from the soba noodles, uh, all of the different dishes, all of the different sushi. I had buri dakon, that was one of my favorite. That's a yellowtail fish. And then da daikon is the vegetable. But I must just say, watch out for horse meat. So there's a great appreciation of horses in the area, but also 
horse meat is on the menu and I nearly didn't spot it. I do not want to eat horses because I have loved horses my whole life. So just watch out for that. But other than that, try all of the food, try all of the fish, have everything in the Japanese style, wear the yukata whenever you get the chance. But honestly, the food here is amazing. And that concludes my 10 things to do in the Fukushima prefecture. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please, please comment on any extras below, anything I've mispronounced or any other ideas and recommendations that you have. Watch out for my other videos on Japan. There will be a Japan series because I love this country and I hope to be back again soon. Particularly watch out for the Nagano snow monkeys. That was an excellent day and I think that video will look amazing. Other than that, thank you so much for watching. Please consider subscribing, hit the notifications if you don't want to miss a video. Give this video a thumbs up if you're enjoying it and happy travels.